Welcome to 60 Skills. This week we are now talking the uh, Kabbalah Q&A. So, first question for the week. You mentioned that you could use Franz Barden's Kabbalah, Kabbalistic letters in the middle pillar exercise. Can you give details of how this could be done? Sure. I prefer to use the vibratory pillar, vibratory formula of the middle pillar for that. Uh, if you check out John Michael Greer's Circles of Power, although uh, you know you probably won't have a signed copy the way I do. Um, go to the vibratory formula of the middle pillar and instead of invoking one of the names of God uh, as are traditionally used in this exercise simply replace that with one of the letters. So again you breathe the energy in many times to the heart center drop it down to your feet then you pull it back up to the heart center and rebound it out of you using uh, you know various gestures and then once it hits the horizon and your attention starts to waver and it rebounds come back uh, issue the appropriate gesture and feel the energy rebound into your energy center then you will want to circulate that energy through the body whether that's around the outside of the body the way they do in the golden dawn system or through maybe the micro macrocosmic orbit is up to you uh, and go from there it's a very potent method and I didn't originally use this I have only been experimenting with this for a little while but this particular method I was given by another Kabbalist go team who is not from the same lineage as I am and this was his primary development tool so short answer again is you're using the same vibratory formula of the middle pillar and you can find that in John Michael Greer's excellent book Circles of Power and you simply substitute uh, the letter for a name of God. Very easy. So next question. Okay, uh, you say it takes 100 hours to learn a letter. Does it mean 100 hours per body for a total of 400? Uh, not yes and no. Uh, as I talk about in my short clip on an hour of practice, what you can do is you can do 15 minutes of lying out of body projection practice, 15 minutes of seated practice, 15 minutes of posture, and 15 minutes of walking for an hour long practice. Doing this with a given letter pulls the letter fully through the body. Um, now again, this is really two hours of practice because you're going to need to counterbalance with the opposing element. So, you know, figure out your timing there. But in general, 100 hours of practice if you're working with all four bodies uh, pretty much all you need uh, that's going to kind of get you up to that intermediate phase with a letter where afterwards improvements still happen but they tend to be a bit slower that first 100 hours is really critical so it's 100 hours if you're training all the different bodies um, if you want to focus on one body for one reason or another or you're only using seated meditation or only using posture driven meditation it's going to take quite a bit longer so uh, again the key here as always is the body is the mechanism of expression so you have to train the different parts of the body both both subtle and gross great question uh, da, da, da. a question is the 16 letter element equilibrium correct I noticed uh, H is in there twice and I thought C was associated with the fire element but it's in the air agent okay another good question um, when you are doing the 16 letter combination uh, both for fire and air in this case some letters have I don't want to say multiple but they're not a pure ex pure expression of say fire air water and earth uh, some letters have a dual expression. So the letter C, for example, is expressed by both fire and air. Kind of interesting. Um, so again, you're going to need to practice with the letters individually for quite a while. And once you've done that, you'll realize that some letters have multiple expressions, not only in terms of the element they represent, but also what level of reality they function on. So on some levels of reality, they may be more one, and on other levels of reality, they may be more another. 
It's a very curious phenomenon. But I get into that a little bit in my book on uh, initial experiences with the Kabbalah. But the fact of the matter is, it's something you have to work with. And uh, once you do that long enough, then those multi-letter combinations become practical to do. But great question. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see, fire. Okay, I was curious about letters and formulas for healing, especially things like bones and teeth, potential to regenerate from magical perspective, versus where we're at with modern medical understanding. And letters, formulas that have to do with developing independence within the astral mental body as well maintaining deep sensitivity when connecting with others. Okay, good questions. Uh, first of all, most things involving health, for lack of a better word, uh, involve the letter L or combinations therein. Uh, there is one exception. Uh, I believe the letter EC combination. Uh, you can find that in the two letter combinations in Barden's uh, book. Deals with uh, reju rejuvenation via rites of uh, um, imbibing or eating things. Um, uh, I'm forgetting the right term for that right now. I'm a little tired. But mostly you're dealing with letter L for that. In terms of regeneration, you need to understand that given state-of-the-art science and what we have available to us today, if you lose a limb, it's gone. If you lose your eye, it's gone. And I have seen no amount of Kabbalistic magic change that. That said, I have seen Kabbalistic magic greatly enhance recovery timelines. So it can definitely speed healing. If you're dealing with things like bone injuries, which are a thing for sure, uh, I would say you need to combine what you're working with with earth element letters. Uh, again, look through Barden's book for some more clues on this. I would also recommend the formula reference guide by Dexheimer if you can get your hands on it. It's not in print and quite difficult to find. Uh, that has some other good information in there involving healing using the letters. But for the most part, if you're talking bones and this kind of heavier tissue in the body, you're generally working with uh, earth element. Now, there are a couple other caveats here. One, the letter L deals with vitality and healing in general. So the more vitality you have, the quicker you're going to recover from something. Okay, great. However, the letter G also deals with the medicine Buddha type figures. So there's a relationship there. Uh, in particular with the letter G, you need to focus where that energy is going to go. Now, I'm not saying this is going to allow you to build a new pancreas if yours has been surgically removed. Okay. But I suspect using the letter G on damaged organs properly could definitely enhance their functioning. Uh, so if you're going to play around with that, be very careful and never, ever, ever do anything with the heart. Uh, it's very easy to interrupt the rhythm of the heart using Kabbalistic magic. And uh, you make that mistake once, it might be the only mistake you make with it. So. Great questions all around, guys. Uh, I apologize for being late for a week, but sometimes things happen. And I uh, look forward to hearing from everybody soon, and keep them coming. Be well.